Hello and welcome everyone to the Cyverse webinar series. I'm Tina Lee, Cyverse's User Engagement Officer. Today's webinar is on using Cyverse resources, a little programming, and the GraphBiz tool to do large-scale biological network analysis. Our presenters are Iqbal Hossein and Ritu Tuteja, both at the University of Arizona. For those of you who are new to Cyverse, we are a cyber infrastructure project funded by the US National Science Foundation and this free webinar series helps fulfill a key part of our mission to train scientists on how to use Cyverse's computational resources. I'll quickly cover some housekeeping before we start the webinar. Our presentation today is approximately 35 minutes. Please mute your audio and open the chat window if you have any questions. You can type them there for Iqbal and Ritu to answer after their presentation. The webinar video recording and the link to other materials like the tutorial will be posted on our website later today for you to review at any time. In addition to these webinars, Cyverse offers focused training workshops and learning materials that are available online. Please visit our website learning pages for more information about these resources to help you learn and teach using Cyverse. We're also happy to announce that we've launched the Discovery Environment 2.0. It's the same great workspace but with a new interface and more functionality for you to do your science. So please check it out. And now I am pleased to introduce our presenters. Iqbal Hossein is a research scientist in the Office for Research, Innovation and Impact at the University of Arizona. He has a PhD in computer science and engineering from Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology and completed his postdoc at the University of Arizona's computer science department. His areas of expertise include network analysis and visualization, design and analysis of algorithms, natural language processing, and machine learning. Ritu Tuteja is a science informatician at Cyverse who works with our platforms, our developers, and researchers to develop cutting edge scientific workflows and applications in the areas of bioinformatics and high throughput sequence analysis. She earned her master's degree in bioinformatics from Banasthali University in India, and her PhD in plant sciences and bioinformatics from the National University of Ireland in Galway. Welcome Ritu and welcome Iqbal. Thank you. Ritu, you're muted. Thanks, Dina. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining. Today, I'm going to show you how do you take your network and uncover your network structure step by step progressively like this. You started from here and slowly you uncover the network structure and end up to seeing the structure of the network. Okay, advertise time. You heard my name. I work on institutional knowledge map, K-map. In K-map, we collect lots of unstructured data and build knowledge graph for an institute and visualize them, analyze them to build an institutional knowledge map. All right, so today we will be covering what is graph. Maybe some of our folks knew, so I'll be telling what is graph and how we can model information to graph. And then I will introduce dot language if you don't know, and we'll tell a little bit about graph this. I'll start with a real world example and show progressively how we can manipulate the node attribute, edge attribute, and see the structure of the network. And finally, I'll show you how you can do, you can use this set of tools in cyber system. Here is our readme file and tutorials. The, all of the codes I have been using in this presentation are here. You can clone and see all together. Here is the webinar call. So let's get started. First question is what is a graph? What is network data? When I ask this question, some people say, well, I know it's a chart. No, 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 it's a not a chart. It's a network data, then oh, now I know it's a computer network. No, 
So the mathematical definition of graph or network, the term is interchangeable here, is simple. You have a set of object that we call node or vertices and a set of edges that we call relationship or the connection between that objects. That simple the definition of the graph, but this is really complex data because our human brain cannot process this kind of connection and node to node, S to S connection. So we cannot perceive this information very easily. So that's why challenging comes to understanding the graph data, uh, network data. And another thing it's become very popular because any information you can model as a graph data and gra you can analyze as a graph. And in this world, everything is connected. All of the information is connected. So I will show a couple of examples to give you kind of sense that what is graph. Here is an example of graph. We call this is research topic network. Each of the node is a research topics and connection between two topics, maybe they are related. So that's why you build a connection. So that's the research topic network. This is a web link network. That means if you can go one website to another website, you can assume that each of the website is a node and the, you can, when you can visit another website, this is a connection. So you can model that information like a graph network. You can see protein to protein network, each of the node is a protein and each of the edge is protein to protein interaction. You can, you can see gene regulatory network as, as a network where each node is a gene or they are regulators and edge is the physical or regulatory relation to, between the, those. You can see the chemical network like this. Each of the node is one chemical and its connection represent that some chemical starts reactioning and turns into another chemical. So this is called directed graph. So all of these examples I have shown is connected, but graph or network doesn't have to be connected. It could be disconnected. It could be collection of isolated vertex, um, lots of components it could happen. Now, now you have a sense of graph. The question is how do you store this graph in your computer? When you have Excel file, CSV file, you know how it works. How we should keep this information in as a file? I will start from there. So that's how where I come from um, dot representation. You can store your graph as an XML file, JSON file, node list, even Excel in Excel file, you can do that. So today we will be talking about dot representation. A dot file is a simple text file, but very powerful to represent and store and process graph information, graph description. Um, I will show a couple of example about how do you um, see dot file and produce dot file for your graph. So this is an example dot file. It is a text file with extension dot dot. If you in this text file, if you write graph, then curly bracket is start and four nodes A, B, C, D that represent exactly like this four node. But of course you want connection, right? Means A's. So you, in same file, you write node A dash dash B semicolon. That means node A and B are connected. So this graph is exactly represent this, uh, uh, this graph. Now, of course, world is not so easy, that easy. What happened, this, uh, these nodes had hundreds of attributes. So how do we pick up the attributes in the file? Here node A, I have maybe many attributes like attribute name and they are value. Attributes name and they are value. And these attributes stay with the node. 
it doesn't have anything with the connection. The connection you mentioned by the node to node connection and all of the other information either associate with the node or edges. For example, in CDS, we have some more information like weight or some other information that is still with the uh, edges. Now, if you have if you, if you have this kind of information in a dot file, how do you render this information? One of the big challenge here is this definition of graph and dot file doesn't tell you where should you put node A, B, C, or D. Because the definition doesn't tell you the geometric coordinate. How do you find that? And why that is a big deal to find a good position of the node. Next two slides, I will explain that, why that's important. So this is an example of dot file. You see, uh, you can mix up edges and node as well. That's completely valid. So I see one, two, three, four nodes and two edges. This drawing is completely fine. But all of the other drawing is also okay. It's, it's, it's nothing wrong with that. But as a human, I don't like this one or this one because I don't want to know the overlap. I, I cannot see the A's even there. And uh, I don't like crossing, okay? I cannot see and read the information from the structure when I have that kind of drawing. But uh, the graph definition, graph information is completely valid for this drawing. I don't like this long edge. So you started to see that it's complete. You have, when you have four node, you have infinite number of layout that we call embedding. The same relationship, same number of vertices, then you can draw it infinite number of different ways. Now, question is how do you make it meaningful? Here's another example. I have a graph with a ram random embedding. That means the node position has been chosen as randomly. And, and you see it's, yeah, it's, you see the connection is good. But one day you recover, discover that the, it has same, same drawing, it's for the same graph, it has another drawing like this. Then you sense, everything because this is much more easy to read. You see the one node, there is one node connected with four and one long tail. So immediately you see the information, how this thing is connected, but you can spend one hour to try to understand this. So, so that's why the challenging part is how do you embed that relationship, abstract relationship in 2D plan with that keeping in mind People have to do research with object with many objectives, hundreds of objectives to understand how do we draw the graph so that it can be readable. Okay, couple of examples. We don't want crossing, so we want to reduce crossing. Not you can you, not always you can avoid all the crossing. So how do you reduce the crossing? How you should draw the edge? Should it be curve or straight line or with bend? how long you should put the edge length. It, everything has kind of impact of the drawing and understanding. So there is a research area, it's called graph drawing. People do research on that. Anyway, so today we will be talking a piece of software called GraphViz. GraphViz is open and free source. It, it, it contains a set of software like this. It, and one of the software is SFDP. So this is command line tool. What it does, it actually take your dot file and find a optimal embedding of, the, of your graph. And based on your attribute, it renders the graph. That is a beautiful thing. And now question is why this? Because this one is scalable. You can load 100,000 of vertices of a graph. It, it, it should be completely fine. 
there's a website you can visit there to know more. Next few slides, we'll be looking how to use SFDP. Suppose I have a dot file, how do we use that? Let's look at that. Do you, you have a dot file named simple dot dot with some set of is node and setup is, and you will define your attribute based on your need. Maybe you want to put some level or some width or some size, weight and color, shape, lots of things you can specify. So for example, node A, we are specifying some width. And so if this is dot file, it contains information. It's not necessary you have to use in the, in the drawing, okay? So when, when you have installed GabVis or when you use this system in Cybers, you will have access to this SFDP command in command line tool. You give input simple the dot file and tell that I want the output at PNG. When you hit that, it creates this image. All of the node position is optimized. We will see the bigger example later. And one thing I like very much that is you can send some global node attribute or edge attribute from SFDP. That means that means you do not have to specify everything here. Some of the global thing, for example, you want node shape point for all nodes. You can do that. There are many other attributes. You can visit this website. Grab this website to see the, all of the attributes and all of the shape, you might be interested, color, there's lots of attribute. So I have been working in this framework in the many years and a couple of the commands I feel very useful. For example, if you want to remove the node level, uh, node level then you should use, tell that G overlap I don't, I want to use overlap algorithm, overlap removal algorithm uh, prism, okay? You can only specify that in command line. If you want to change all S color in single chart for, then you said E means S color, I want red, okay? If you want to generate different optimized algorithm, then you want to send the C value. So that is Z start two, four, five, okay? For example, this one value. If you send, you will see another drawing, but it's still optimized, okay? Right, so the more here, you can look here, All right? So now it's time to do some real world example. What do I mean by real world example? Toy examples are fine, 10 or 20 vertex, nice drawing and color, but real world example is really messy. And it, it is another level of messy and difficult job if you need to create your own network from some data. And by this time you understand it's not only Zin to Zin network, it can be happen for any kind of information. You can create your own network. And or of course you can collect some other clean, nice data. data. So today we'll be starting from here. We'll take a clean, nice data and show how do you uncover the network structure. Right. So this is a website, connect.org. So it has all um, gene and regulatory their connection. We, we um, select some random some random gene ID and get a graph. It's a reasonable size, 14,000 nodes with 23,000 of A's. If you want to play with exactly same set of same network, you can click here and download. I hope you will get the access of the slide very soon. You can uh, download the exact network that we are playing today. So we got a network and there's a lot of popular GUI based software like Y8, um, Cytoscope, or um, Gephi. So probably first thing you want to do, load your software, launch your software and try to load your graph. 
The same graph we loaded in our GUI based system, it looks like this and this. So when I load this one, my computer gets hang and I cannot select a couple of nodes so that I can drag and my mouse has got stuck and similar for here. The thing is GUI based software is very good. If you have a smaller node, few hundreds, uh, not even thousand nodes, you can, you can drag, select a couple of nodes, you can move and see, try to see the structure. But we are, when we are talking about large network, let's see 10, 20, uh, thousand node or hundred thousand node. So that interaction and the visualization animation, we shouldn't expect because, uh, because that's a lots of uh, geometric object in your screen and it's, it's, um, it's not easy. You have some limitation in your RAM, uh, gra um, graphics card. So I don't blame on GUI-based software, but I'm going to show you another technique that you can um, handle that kind of um, graph. Even you can um, make it a smaller graph and load it in this software as well. Well, so today I'm going to show you that pipeline so that you can handle that graph. So what is that pipeline? That pipeline is you need some kind of programming language to manipulate your dot file the way you want, okay? In this case, we'll be using network X from the Python and it's nice, a lots of algorithm and lots of things are already implemented, but you can, you can use anything to create your dot file then you will use your SFDP from your terminal. If you want to use SFDP from your terminal, you have to install GraphViz. Otherwise, you can use Vice app from Cybers resource where you do not have to pay, take pain of the installation. You just load your file and get your visualization. And so you use SFDP and inspect your output. A nice thing is SFTP supports the output. You can generate output as PDF or some very high quality vector graphics like SVG. Even you can generate your another dot file with the coordinates. So the, the dot file we, show, we have shown, there's no coordinate, but you can generate coordinate in the dot file to do further analysis. So that is the pipeline um, you can see um, network X, what network X, uh, what you can do with the network X here. So let's get it started to see. Okay, so we're talking about dot file and your data, I, I, we shouldn't expect that your data is ready for dot file. So typically one line code that you can convert your source format to dot format. Not all format are supported in network, network X. If it does, if some of the file format doesn't support, you can write two, three, four lines of code to convert your um, source file to dot format. And this slide, next next few slides, we we have some kind of code and output that kind of um, information. In this corner, you will get exact the Python code we have used and the output of dot file and also the picture. Probably you want to see the high resolution version and explore, you can click on that and you can see. Anyway, so you load your file and you take an empty graph and you just do loop. So um, I hope that you have some kind of knowledge on the Python programming. If not, that's fine. Uh, all of the things are there. And this code, how difficult to write this code? If you know how to write loop, you will get it, okay? That is it. Right, so uh, we take our input file and convert those network file as a dot file. And we see this is a node, this is the node, line eight is a node with level and some type, okay? We took that. And line 10 represent one is because we see two dot, two dash. Now, once you have dot file, what are you gonna do? You jump in SFDP and give that command, here you go. 
So you said that I don't want to node overlap, okay? I want to draw all node as a point, simple dot point. This is what you do first, okay? You want to see the structure. Then another thing is um, you, you want to say that I don't want to hide my node on behind the edges. So you say that draw is fast, okay? And you want some very high quality image. So um, use S SVG as the output when you hit this command with this input file and you will create this network dot 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 SVG file here you go. What do you see from this network? This network, it, I mean, you can say two things. I cannot see anything. What is there? Or you can see, yeah, I started seeing many things. For example, we see just lots of degree one node. The degree of a node is how many other nodes connected with that node. So I see these, all of the nodes is somehow connected here, here, here. And in the middle, what's going on here? We don't know. So that is called here ball. Um, we need to uncover the structure. We need to understand what's going on here. Uh, let's do that. So first thing maybe you wanted to do, um, you wanted to put color based on the node type. Okay, this is obvious thing. If I, if I have five different type of nodes, let's put five different color. See the what's going on here. Then if you have unknown graph, you don't know how many types are there, right? You, you do not know how many nodes for each of the types. So let's do something um, uh, to understand what is there, what are the different types and how many nodes count. So next, next few slides, we'll be talking about how do we manipulate node attributes. Node attributes actually covers how do you want to put the color of node, shape of the node, font size and other things. So let's do, the line three line of score, take all node types in a variable and count the frequency. So that will give you what kind of, what are the different type of nodes I have and how many I have. It's nice to have, make a bar chart to make it more uh, readable. So here is a few line code to get, get this one, but the original code is like this to count the frequency. Right, what do you see? We see that there's a one type of node called protein coding 11,000 of node, okay? And all of this thing is 1,000, metabolic 1,000 and 1,000 and rest of the very few nodes, okay? So this, this gives you, if you have some unknown graph, this, this tells you a lot that what kind of different node and how many nodes you have. Let's set some color. For example, we want metabolic to red and other RNA to green. And this, this is some random assignment because I don't want to tell the story about that graph, but I want to tell you the story about how do you produce your story, okay? So that's why it's random. Why do you put metabolic red? That's not a question. You put your color, right? So you set the color and again, do a loop through the all node and set the color and in a dot file, you will see that you'll see that um, the color attributes are here. Okay. Now do again, run your SFDP command. Now you start at C. Wow. Lots of blue. What is blue? Okay. Um, and red metabolic. Okay. Now we start at C the what's inside here. Hmm? Good. Next, probably it's fair to see the where is my big node? Who is my, who are my big nodes here? So what are you gonna do? We'll see the degree, how many neighbors each of the node has, then we'll set some value for this. Oh yeah, it's a zoom version, but you always can click here and, and see as busy in your computer. Um, I hope Tina sent the link of this presentation to you guys so that you can um, explore right now. Okay, so here is the idea. You, you take, count the degree of nodes and set some value. I set minimum 1.5 pixel and then um, and some per big node, I 
divided by 15. Uh, if how 15 counts, well, you said, if you don't set 15, maybe the big, big node is taking the whole of space. So it, it make whatever you feel you, you can read. So what it tells, it tells that we have five very, very big node. Yeah, those are the reasonable big and lots of small nodes around here. Uh, but yeah, and then um, you can set your no node shape. For example, I don't, I want metabolic nodes like um, uh, um, a diamond or triangle or some other polygon, or I have some um, icon that I want to set for each of the node. You can do that. Okay, so now you started looking this um, size of the node, color of the node, then next step is edge manipulation. In manipulating the edge attributes means you're gonna set the edge color that helps you to understand the graph. You want to send, if you need, you're going to send the arrow, the direction of the edge, font color, label, edge label, or all of the other things, maybe dotted edge, shadowed edge. We'll see a couple of examples here. Set edge color, so that's a different, that's, you should de decide what color you should set and what is the logic you want to put there. I put a very simple logic that if the both in point of, the, of, of an edge is same type of node, I want to put the same color. That's it, simple. I am looking all edges and saying that each source, type of source and type of destination is the same type then we'll set the color. So now you see this, this blue thing is connected with lots of blue nodes. But you see another interesting thing, there is no red to red edges, okay? There is no red to red. We see black to black, that's, that's fine. Yeah. So you started see the network is taxer. Yep. So we have um, we have some full resolution version. If you want to see, I if you click here, right? Yeah. So this is network, and if you click here, you will get this. Now, what do we do with this thing? So if you know the meaning of the S, if you set the meaning of S, and if you set the meaning of node, if you set the S height, S thickness, then you will see the what is in there, okay? All right. Let's go back. Okay. So now all of the previous example, you see every node is a dot, but how do we see the level here? Because in the SFDP command, we remove the n shape dot. So that's why now she started the level. That easy, right? Okay, next thing what you can do, if we feel some of the edges are not very important to us, then make it, make it light or set some gray color. That's what I did. And you see uh, there's the, your important node and edges started um, showing up and lots of the gray color. Yeah, the similar logic, look all of the edges. If you feel these edges are gray, they're not important, set is color gray, that's it. Next item is subgraph manipulation. What I mean by subgraph manipulation? Because these are the large graph and even if you start at looking the network, um, the edges and important nodes, so that's fine, but some points you wanted to know more. So how do you do that? You, you will able to remove not important nodes, remove them. If you feel that this kind of edge is, I'm not interested on that kind of edges, you can remove them. You can extract some subgraph with some other logic, okay? And then um, you, can, you can create a smaller, smaller graph that you are interested from the big graph. So that's how we call this is subgraph manipulation. You take your subgraph and do all of the other things. 
So when we say subgraph means that or it's not more original graph that we took or we have. We have a kind of subset of A's and subset of nodes. Okay. So to do that, first thing you need to know the degree distribution. What do you mean by degree distribution? I should, should know that how many nodes I have with degree one. That's again, very simple line, line, you load your graph and take all the degree and count the frequency. It, 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 it give you how many nodes and, and their degree. And you want to see this chart. So here's a couple of lines code. Again, if you click here, you will direct land to the code of this um, Python file. So we see that degree one node is 8,000 of node and degree two node is 4,399 nodes. So we, so till now we are actually understand that we have a lot of degree one sitting around the network. I probably we want to delete them to see more insights inside or some other logic. So I will show a couple of example next. How do you actually remove node? When you remove node, you actually remove all of the associate A's as well, okay? You cannot tell that I want to keep A's but delete the node, no. When you delete node, it goes including the all of its A's. First thing is remove degree one, okay? Degree one means this node is exactly connected with one other node, one other node. So I remove all of them and you see this is completely different. All of this node uh, has in original graph, it has more than degree one, okay? Let's delete more. For example, I'm not interested, some, not interested on some kind of node. So remove all of the nodes. So I remove all of the node that um, black or some other color. color. And now I can see that there's lots, it's the, it, this is the core part of the network, if you say so. So you see some of, we have five big, big, um, this node and some of the nodes are really connected to lots of the same kind of node, but here I don't see much, okay? Maybe those are connected with this um, gray, node, gray edges with the red and different color of nodes, okay. Yeah, so you, now you can see started, you can delete more or you can, you can extract your subgraph with different logic. I want this kind of node and this kind of edges and create that dot file and put in SFDP to render that. Now, if you do more, we'll see more. I, I, I delete actually a little bit more here, okay. Now same graph, now it's time you can read a node level with this command. Now you can see that so exact name of the node. It looks good. All right. If you want to visualize the this core part on top of the whole network, you can do that. The similar logic, logic. Uh, you can take your edges and noted nodes and put different color and hide rest of the part. For example, the edges and the edges I'm not interested, I put gray and I'm saying that put edge width is tiny, 0.2, okay? For example, 0.2 pixel, very hmm. tiny. So this, this gray edges become lighter, 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 okay? And, uh, and the other edges that I'm interested in, other subgraph, I'm saying that um, increase edge width. So you see here, right? So that is the subgraph manipulation. That visualization helps to understand, see the graph, but there's a lot of, lot of other numbers that tell you more about the graph, okay? So we will see a couple of example. How do you use that? It's a basic function. You want to see how many numbers, average degree, how many separate connected component, whether my whole graph is connected or not, uh, that kind of thing. You want to see the diameter. So that of the, you, if you know the definition of this uh, um, basic thing, you understand the graph instantly. From a number, you will see, oh, 
the mrs shortest path is for means the graph is very connected or there is no long long path um in the network okay that very powerful but you have to know the meaning of this thing typically all of this thing is one line code if you use uh, network x in python so this is the corresponding line of code you can write and get the number if you click here you actually see the exact number for the graph we are handling here but this part is really really big there is a hundred the hundreds of different type of uh, measurement and attributes i would say this is a uh, tip of iceberg i'll leave a couple of uh, other things here for example when you measure matrix and the graph you can focus on degree there is lots of measurement on the degree distance based connectivity centrality similarity that kind of things are available uh maybe maybe it's a good idea to um, do another webinar with network analysis too so there's lots of advanced function for example graph comparison matching coloring charts uh, you can do all kind of stuff to analyze your graph okay now that's the important part how do i run this thing i understand the not dot file i understand how sfdp works i understand i can copy the uh, sfdp command from slides but how to do that well there is two thing two ways as i said you can install your graph the software in your computer and you can run your command or you can go to your cyber account and we have created two apps for you one called graph is and another called jupiter lab graph is so using graph is you can submit your 100000 of uh, node node with a net uh, nodes with network and then uh, you can submit as a job and it's create a beautiful picture for you and if you want to do interactive you can go here and i am going to show you quickly how do you actually do that Uh, if you log in in your um, Skyverse account, yeah, go ahead, log in. Okay, then go to app, then search grab this. You will see two apps. Okay, one is for submitting a job, another is for doing some interactive visualization. Let's go for interactive. and here if you click on details uh, this is the preloaded examples are there that we have used today you click there click next okay launch your job then yeah job is submitted if you click there you will go in interactive mode then it's loading your app Hmm. Okay, and then the demo. Here is your dot file that we have used today. This is a Python, a Python notebook. You can run all of the cell. Here is the example of code of node and is attribute manipulation. Here is the code uh, for drawing the graph. Let's take a quick look of the look the network dot file. Yeah. So this is star means it's still running. This is step and this is step running. Uh, skip few second. Still running. Yeah, here you go. Yeah. So that is the visualization. But there we have some other. We had some other um, way you can use this grab this tools in cybers. click on this link and you will land with a very small video how do you do submit your job or you have own your network how you don't care about this uh, demo if you have own network if you want to visualize them go here and go to interactive mode mode and then um, render your graph that's it so recap we have shown you how do you actually manipulate your network and create a dot file and then how do you use sfdp to render your graph 
And once you get um, rendered, you have opportunity to make it as VZ PDF and you can go back and do again the same thing. In this way, you actually avoiding your um, limitation on GUI-based software. But of course, we can, you can extract your subgraph and put back in your GUI-based software to see more details. That's completely possible and I recommend that. Again, read our tutorial, look our GitHub repository, and I will stop here for your question. Iqbal, thank you so much. That's great. Um, I don't see any questions in the chat yet, so uh, people might just be digesting a lot of what you showed. Um, and like I said, we are recording so that you can uh, come back to visit this video at any time later on, take it at your own pace. Um, if people do have questions, let's see, we do have one. Is it possible to perform some query into the graph that generated from the dot file? Yeah, I mean, the approach we have shown is programmatic approach. You, programmatically, you can logic that build and traverse your graph and to get your query result. But there is other uh, database system um, that you can load your whole graph there to make just query, okay? Okay. Um, well, we're waiting to see if anybody has other questions. I wanted to uh, just make a final bit of announcement that we'll be on spring hiatus on March 19th in two weeks. So our next webinar will be in four weeks when uh, my colleague Sean Davey of our cloud native services team will demonstrate data watch API, which enables you to trigger code or run a workflow at a pre specified data event. So join us for that. In the meantime, let's see, we've got a question. Is it possible to link R and graph is? Yeah. How would, possible. how would you do that in the... So um, GraphBiz and NetworkX, they have um, uh, uh, packages for R. You can use that as well. The syntax would be similar, very similar. Okay, yeah, Ryan posted the uh, bioconductor.org packages there. So, okay. Uh, Ritu, did you want to add anything? Ritu helped uh, work on the tutorial a lot. So I don't know if you wanted to point anything out about that. Yeah, so I can publish on the screen. We have a few more minutes for questions. So take your time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I have uh, described a lot about the data um, from where, what was the data source and uh, how did we download the data uh, and um, how many transcription factors, how many nodes and edges and what other formats are supported um, and all the links to the uh, input sample input files you can access. Uh, so I'll put the uh, link for the tutorial in the chat again. And that's also on um, Iqbal's second to the last screen, right? Where he put the read the docs, the GitHub and the, the Cyverse um, apps. Okay, another question. You mentioned calculating diameter and so on. Is there a way to calculate modularity? If so, since there are multiple algorithms uh, for modularity, which algorithm does this use? Well, when you have multiple algorithms, so typically everything for everything you have multiple op options. Um, you have to choose and see um, which one fits for your problem. In Network X, you have the, all of this kind of function is implemented, and uh, typical one-line code you can um, in, in, in can, you can import Network X and put your graph there to calculate all of this um, modularity, diameter, and other parameters. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions? If not, as I mentioned, we'll add this video recording to our webinar pages um, where you can also find other science and technology videos in our webinar series. 
And again, we're on hiatus uh, in two weeks, but in four weeks, join us for Data Watch API, uh, a webinar on that. Um, I think that uh, it'll be something that those with some programming skills, developers, and IT people who are tired of writing cron, cron jobs will be very interested in. So until then, thank you everyone, stay healthy, and we'll see you back on April 2nd. Thank you, Iqbal and Ritu.